Hey, I'm golf broadcaster Matt Adams, the updated and expanded second edition of my book, The Golf Round I'll Never Forget, Golf's Biggest Stars Recall Their Finest Moments, is now available. Readers can expect to march with Arnie's Army at the 1960 U.S. Open, relive Jack Nicklaus's remarkable 1986 Masters win, and be amazed by the Tiger Slam. The Golf Round I'll Never Forget, Golf's Biggest Stars Recall Their Finest Moments. Pick it up where fine books sold, including barnesandnoble.com and amazon.com. Thrive Sweet Productions. And welcome back to This Day in Sports History. It's January 25th, and on this day in 1924, it was the opening day of the very first Winter Olympic Games. It was held in Chamonix, France, at the base of Mont Blanc, from the 25th through February 5th, 16 countries, including the United States, were represented with Germany banned from competing due to their role in World War I. Now, several winter sports had actually been included in previous summer Olympic Games. Figure skating was part of the 1908 London Games, and ice hockey had been played in Antwerp during the Summer Olympics in 1920. But, you know, for obvious reasons... Sports needing frozen surfaces weren't always conducive for warmer climates. So it was deemed that winter sports needed its own spectacle, and in 1924, it was the first winter sport-specific Olympics. There were five sports represented, with some of those subdivided into different disciplines. There was ice hockey, four-man bobsleigh, curling, skating, and skiing. Skating included figure and speed skating disciplines, and skiing was split up into cross-country skiing, ski jumping, Nordic combined, which combined cross-country skiing and ski jumping, and an event called Military Patrol, which was a four-man team event that has similarities to modern biathlon now, with cross-country skiing and shooting combined in one event. All of the events were held outside, with ice hockey, speed skating, and figure skating sharing the same outdoor ice rink. A few interesting competitors, an 11-year-old Sonia Henney competed in the eight-woman field, finishing eighth, but she was far from discouraged. She would come back in the 1928 Olympics and win gold, and follow that up in 1932 and 36 with two more gold medals. The American hockey team featured Taffy Abel, who was a Native American from the Ojibwe from Sault Ste. Marie, Michigan. He helped the U.S. win silver and was the flag bearer for the 24-person Olympic squad from the States. He would go on to become the first Native American to play in the NHL in 1926 with the New York Rangers and play on a couple of Stanley Cup winners. Norway collected the most medals, walking away with a total of 17, including four golds. The U.S. won four total medals, with one of those being gold. However, the gold medal was won by speed skater Charles Jutra on the first day of competition, making him the first ever gold medal winner of the Winter Olympics. Also on this day in 1960, Wilt Chamberlain set an NBA rookie record by scoring 58 points in a game. He actually did it twice that year. This was the first of the two. And in 1939, boxer Joe Lewis knocked out John Henry Lewis in the first round of a bout fought in Madison Square Garden. The two were friends, and this fight was more of a favor to John Henry, who was nearly blind in one eye, and the sight in the other wasn't great. Joe wanted to give John Henry one decent payday before he retired, which he did after this fight. That's it for today. When you have a moment, rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or your podcast app of choice. Thanks for listening. More tomorrow on This Day in Sports History. Hey there, sports history fan. This is Arnie Chapman, a.k.a. the Football History Dude. And I hope that you enjoyed this recent episode presented by the Sports History Network and were able to learn some good old-fashioned sports history knowledge nuggets. I started the Sports History Network back in 2020 with the mission to help podcasters find a community of like-minded sports history nerds as well as helping aspiring podcasters to start their own shows. We have a little bit over 30 shows on the network right now covering all sorts of sports history, but as far as I'm concerned... We're just at the toothpick in the ocean moment, you know, that can't even figure it out because there's so much more coming. We wanted to create the ultimate headquarters for sports yesteryear. 
starting with Podcast Network and our website, but we're going to continue to move into other mediums as well. And here's the cool part, because we want you to be part of our team. So if you're interested in starting your own podcast, or maybe being a guest on one of our shows, or who knows, maybe even writing an article for us over on the website. Seriously, all you got to do is reach out to us on the contact page over at sportshistorynetwork.com. You can be as technologically savvy as a Neanderthal tapping on a stone trying to figure out this whole hieroglyphics thing back in the day. Again, it doesn't matter, because even if you don't understand the whole podcast space, we have a production team that can pretty much help you out with doing everything. All you got to do, head over to sportshistorynetwork.com, head to the contact page, fill it out. That message goes right to me, and I'll reach out to you as soon as I can. But for now, dude, I'm through if you're through.